Hi Aries, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for a mid-month tarot reading for July 2021. This is for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. If you're new to the channel, welcome to you. I'm glad you're here. I post new readings every Friday and then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, you can check back in a couple of days. And you could also look around on these Monday readings. So this week is a mid-month. I do a love reading. There's a pick a card reading on Mondays. And then, then the, the Friday readings are just um, a, a general reading, okay? And um, thanks to everybody for supporting the channel, watching readings, hitting the like button, and of course, subscribing. And if you like tarot and you like this channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What does Aries need to know, please? What messages do you have for Aries, please? Just do one more. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we'll begin here with the tarot, and then we'll have the angel answers. Oracle cards. Your current situation, you've got the lovers. The immediate influence is the empress. Your destiny here is the queen of swords. You've got the hierophant in the distant past, the two of swords in the more recent past. You've got the magician coming towards you. You're represented by the ace of cups. The person around you is the ace of pentacles. You've got the two of pentacles. Interesting, three aces right in a row. Two of pentacles and hopes and fears. Ace of swords and the outcome. All right, very powerful energy. Now, the bottom of the deck, you've got these three as clarifiers. Um, you know, I'm going to say, before we get into this too much, if you're dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, they're definitely here. You've got Earth here, and you've got Taurus, um, so Taurus, Virgo, Cap. You've got water, too, though. Um, so, not a very fiery reading, but a powerful one. So, with this, <clears throat> it's all about keeping commitments and really being true to yourself okay so in a in a relationship or in even in a career setting you know if you're in a situation where you're going to a job and every time that alarm goes off you go oh damn it please no not another day of this you're not in your gift you're not being true to your gift so don't outrun those gifts let let them find you okay and they all begin with an idea they just begin with your thoughts and so you have a powerful mind. You've got it here in the reading multiple times. So the Eight of Cups, this is really bringing things to a higher level. And it really is about your worth. You've got a lot to offer here. The Knight of Pentacles brings in stability. It brings in a, a feeling of um, wanting to do things right the first time. Not wanting to repeat the same old mistakes again and again. If it's a relationship, not wanting a carbon copy of some old shitty relationship, you know, this is like, no, this time I'm doing it. I'm doing it for me. Okay. It's like you doing it for you. And of course the King of Swords brings in clarity of thought. And the quickest way to do that is meditate, quiet that mind, get all that noisy stuff, all the busyness too, especially with that two of pentacles that busy sort of active energy, it's important to get yourself back to center so you're not kind of flummoxing through this energy wildly. We don't want to do that. The King of Swords will bring in clarity, intellect, and the ability to communicate too really clearly. So I really like this reading, of course. I mean, I love the magician. And um, whenever the magician shows up, it just makes me happy. But you also have, interestingly enough, I mean, this is pretty crazy. We'll pick this up. I mean, God, how do we want to do this? There's a lot of ways we could. <clears throat> I mean, you know, you've got the magician, the empress, and the lovers here. I mean, this is powerful in terms of manifesting a beautiful relationship. So with the, um, and the, the other thing I was going to do, this is what I was going to do originally, because this is five and six too. I mean, you've got a lot of cards that are fairly close together in the deck. I mean, it's all about the hero's journey. The major, the major arcana are the trump of the tarot, and they're not, the number alignment is to tell a story, okay? So when they show up close together, it's like you're having this big transition, and it's a valuable time for you. It's this point of ascension. So the lovers represents an important relationship for sure. It's being you know, guided by love with the Empress here. And it's got, you've got Archangel 
Raphael here. And so with the Empress, you've got wonderful creative ideas. You may have a, be in a relationship where you have a lot of passion. Like, you know, you have great ideas for things you can go do. And they may not cost a lot of money. They may just be fun ideas. It's definitely an energy of having fun, getting out there, being in a place where you're really enjoying one another. And so with the Empress, too, she's also the mother of the tarot. And the Empress is actually in the deck. It's the high priestess impregnated by the magician, okay? So he's here too. So be aware of your own fertility, depending on what you're trying to do with that. Just know that you have indications here to be very fertile, very fertile time. It also, though, can be the fertility and the growth of ideas and things around you. Because whatever goals you set with the three aces that are here and the magician, that's gains. You're setting goals and crushing them. You're going to keep expanding to the point that you're going to need to set new goals because you're going you're going to bypass what you're doing. You're like it's like flying past this these goals at warp speed. So ease into it. Let yourself be easy about it. The Queen of Swords is very no nonsense energy. You get the job done. There's no doubt about that. You speak your mind. You speak the truth. You have integrity. And you're a person, though, who learns from your mistakes. You don't live there. And so you may have a bit of a tendency to come off as a little shrewd or harsh, especially if it's been a road you've been down before. Um, you're hard to convince to go down that road again if you cite or you, you see something that indicates dishonesty or something that just doesn't jive with you, you're not going to do it. Now, it's also, like I said, a card of a very intellectual person being really good with communication, you're just very upfront. I mean, that's your style. You're very direct. And it does, it moves you forward in a positive way. Now, for some of you, this also may be a card of having a lot of education. It's a very, like I said, it's an intelligent card, but also very educated queen as well. So the only thing with this is just kind of being watchful of not being too callous, you know, having some of those empathy skills here too. So the Hierophant, you may have gone through something where you really had to rely on your spirituality and just putting one foot in front of the other. But boy, did you make a lot of gains in terms of wisdom, knowledge, and really understanding why you're here. The Hierophant represents your inner guru, your your best self. And in this energy, even if your back was against the wall, you, you will not, your, your inner guru will not tell you to lie your way out of it, to cheat, steal, double cross people, okay? This is an energy of really following your guides and following your purpose here, your soul's purpose here. So he holds up his hand and says, be still and know. So know that you're on the right path here and that you're being guided. It's a card of Marriage for some, it's a card of higher education. I get that more predominantly here. So those of you that spent some time even during the pandemic, if you took a class or something, it definitely opens a lot of doors. You have many new doors opening for you. So with the Two of Swords, you have a little bit of a caught in the middle energy. And for some of you, it may have been not sure what to do in a career. I do get that with the Hierophant getting some extra training or opportunities and then not wanting to leave somewhere that you're loyal, not really being sure what the next step is for you. So with this, it's an energy of really wanting to protect yourself. And so the bottom sword is fear, the top sword's anger. Now for others of you, if there was a relationship that's that ended, it has ended, okay? And so this, it left you here though. And so for you moving forward, you've got a new love here showing up. Or if you're in something already, though, it is, you've got a loving relationship in the reading. So I just want to be clear about that. It's not, um, it is not a reading that says you're single, okay? When you have things like this, you've got manifesting great love and it runs the distance. You know, it's a relationship that, that evolves, develops, and stands the test of time. So with the magician here, you are a powerful manifester. So be aware of the thoughts that you apply your feelings to, all right? We have 70,000 thoughts a day and we can't possibly manage all of those. But if you start to have strong feelings, be aware that you're putting that sort of, uh, you know, oomph into it to manifest. It's like throwing miracle grow all over it when you put your feelings with it. 
So the magician is um, an energy where you move forward easily, okay? He gets rid of illusions too. So you see through anybody who maybe doesn't have your best interest in mind. If you are out and you're dating and you're not sure about a relationship, you won't have a problem discerning who's, who's for you and who's not. But you've got here a deep desire to have a relationship that's very transparent and open and fun. And just this, there's something about trust with this, really needing to be able to trust the other person. Um, and so it feels like you've had something that was, um, you know, there was a lack of trust in a previous relationship. So this will inspire that. This is also a card of fake it till you make it. So having the feeling before you have it, living like you already have it. So, you know, when you're, when you're newly in love, you walk through world the world a lot easier, right? You don't worry about some of the small problems as much because you have something else to focus on. So it may be good to find something to focus on if you are single um, because that'll help to ease this and make it seem more like, you know, more like it's happening now. So um, it's with this, so it's also about using your conscious mind. Now for others of you, like I said, if you've met somebody, the relationship is definitely picking up momentum. It's beautiful. With the Ace of Cups, you can definitely be yourself and be easy about things. You know, it's never ending love. It's you feeling cared for, loved, and there's an emotional intensity to this. It feels amazing. And so it's any, too, any new passion or endeavor, I do see that sticking around with these two Aces, the other two Aces that are here. But this is an abundant, um, abundant love. You know, it doesn't die. And love doesn't die, right? People change. They come out of alignment. But the love itself, love still exists in the universe. It doesn't die off with the end of a relationship. So you have it again here. This represents the person or situation. It's a new chapter. And it's, again, it's abundant. It's prosperous. It's a new chapter with somebody who is... It feels like they're very um, creative. They have a very creative side to them. Maybe they have a business or even a side hustle that they just get into a lot of things. I see that. So they're not somebody who needs to be entertained. Okay, they're stable, but they don't, they're not needy or dependent. That is not who this person is. They've got, it feels like um, their own self-development. You know, they're well-rounded. Like I said, they have a lot of different interests, but it's not it's not like it's frenzied either. They really do like to stay busy, but they have room. I mean, they want a relationship. This is somebody who wants a commitment. And so with the two of pentacles, this is your hopes and fears. You know, I feel like for some of you, you're, you're kind of tossing around the idea about being in a relationship or being in a relationship. You don't want what you had before. You want something new. And something, too, where there's enough money in this situation so you can go out and do things. They're self-sufficient. I do feel like this person is emotionally and mentally very self-sufficient. They may be, a, you may be a Taurus or another Earth sign because you do have a lot of Earth here. I do get Earth sign for this person. Um, and that's that stable groundedness, too. But they offer a lot. And so with this, you know, it's kind of getting your mind settled again so that you're not as caught up in the confusion of what to do, the answers will come to you with clarity. And here you go. So with the Ace of Swords, you know, both of these feature the Yods of the Tarot, right? These little droplets, First, that's the first letter of the name of God in Hebrew. These Yods are gifts coming into you, Aries. And so with this, the Ace of Swords, any goals you set, anything that you have your mind set to do, you're doing it. There's no stopping you with this. And it's clarity of thought, yes, it's great communication, but it's that drive to move forward. It's knowing what to do next and, and, and knowing that you have these opportunities, that these are available to you. It's having that unwavering faith. So with this too, an upright sword always indicates a, a favorable condition, right? So this is different than this. These are not upright. So that's why part of why the Two of Swords is a, more of a stagnant energy and uncertain. This is complete certainty. So let's see what the angels have to say. And you'll notice it here too, right? She has a really upright sword. So does Justice. The king has his slightly off to the side. But again, these upright swords are clarity of thought. It's getting away from 
that previous energy of uncertainty or feeling like you need to protect yourself. You can put, you can let your guard down here. <clears throat> so we will see about these angels here. All right. So you have here, no need to worry, okay? No need to worry. Things are moving forward. You've got recovery too. And it, again, it may be that Queen of Swords, Two of Swords energy, recovering from some difficulties, some uncertainty, peaceful resolution. So whatever you're coming out of, you're definitely moving forward here. Now, interesting, I say that and they say, wait. But I feel like when they say that, it's almost like, wait and see what happens here. As you continue through this energy, good things are on the way. You've got a yes, okay? So you create and design your own reality. We're going to do an Abraham Hicks here at the end. I just thought it'd be fun. This is from Abraham Hicks. I am the creator of my own life experience. You are the creator of your own life experience. And as the creator of your experience, it is important to understand that it is not by virtue of your action, not by virtue of your doing. It is not even by virtue of what you are saying, that you are creating. You are creating by virtue of the thoughts that you are offering. Okay, so know that if you can see it and feel it in your mind, you can have it in your reality. Good things are coming. I love you, Aries, and I'll be back again soon.